going to be a pretty big day. I got asked to do the keynote speech for Science Fest. Science Fest is an event for 5th and 6th graders to take a field trip away from their school to learn all about science for the day. They have four sessions that they go to, the first of which is for the entire audience, and it's the keynote speech. So I will be doing a presentation for five to 600 students. So don't get me wrong, I'm really excited, but at the same time, I am equally as nervous for this. The keynote speech is about turtles, and my following sessions are about snakes. So we have a lot of animals in the car. Like, no joke, probably a couple dozen reptiles with us right now. But we're leaving a day early because tomorrow is the day of Science Fest, but they're expecting a snowstorm. So they have us set up at some sort of guest house tonight. So we'll see what that's all about, and I'll show you when we get there. Yay, traffic! This is why we left a day early. Getting close! We made it! Here's where it'll be. Okay, so we just checked out the classroom that we'll be doing our sessions in tomorrow, and you've, you've got to see this. This is awesome. The entire room is full of taxidermied animals. This red fox has seen some serious stuff in his lifetime. So has this bobcat. What? That middle one. There's just hawks in our classroom. This is awesome. And a goat. Wow, that's just amazing. And then these are all birds. Aw, this pheasant's butt fell off. But look at that pretty pheasant. Swan. Wow, and a whooping crane. The rare and exotic chicken. What sound does the night hawk make? Meep. Yep. Mine? Aw. <laughs> Aw, poor little grebe. Oh, that's the one that kills their baby. No, this, that's the coot. Oh, is it? Where's the coot? There's the coot. This is the species that kills all but their favorite couple of young. Holy cow, there's even a passenger pigeon. These are extinct, guys. I've never seen one in person. Do you want to explain yourself? <laughs> this is one of our retics who will be joining us at our snake programs after the keynote. And she's having fun on Ed. All the animals will be staying in this room tonight. It's a heated building and we will be staying the night at the guest house next door. So I have everyone set up for the evening. The tortoises, turtles, that's another tortoise uh, rescue that I'm borrowing from a friend for this program. And then all of our snakes are down there in those blue bins. We have some things for kids to do while they wait for us to start. And I think we are all set for tomorrow. This pendulum is just outside of the classroom that we'll be teaching at, and although it appears to be rotating with time, in reality the motion of the pendulum remains constant, and the movement is actually the earth and this building rotating underneath the pendulum itself. So in a way, this is actually a clock. At our latitude, which is 45 degrees, it takes 33 hours and 44 minutes to move a full 360 degrees. So each brass marking on the floor represents one hour. The next markings represent one half hour, followed by 15 minute markings. Well, here's the auditorium I'll be speaking in tomorrow. Holy cow. This place is huge. Oh boy. How neat is that? That's pretty neat. Literally right next door to the building that I'll be speaking in is the guest house. Let's check it out. The lights turned on just for us. Uh, 216. All right. Strange. Actual lock and key. Uh oh. Oh. Or I just don't know. Do you have to hold it while you? Oh. Uh, okay. Wow. 
Oh, cool. Very minimalist. Yeah, it is. This is awesome, though. Mm -hmm. Works for us. College kids. And their natural <gasps> habitat. Hang on. Well, you're not going to get them. Oh, we missed them. Although the room might be a little small, we get this entire lounge to hang out in. As I, yeah, as I hit the wall. That's not too shabby. Well, I've been studying my PowerPoints all evening and I think I'm ready. All right, it's the morning of the program. Let's check on the reptiles. Good morning, critters. How are we doing? Oh, I scared you, sorry. Good morning. Okay, we're looking pretty good. How are you doing? You look fine. Perfect. Let's bring him to the auditorium. I don't have an itinerary, so I'm kind of curious if it's on this. Oh, hey, that's me. Yeah. Okay, so I am 9.05 to 10.05. Got it. Well, here we are. T minus 10 minutes until my speech. And. The audience is definitely filling up. Here we go. Start with a turtle species that you have probably seen before. What's the most common turtle? Yeah, there we go. The painted turtle. So the painted turtle is of course named after its belly, which looks like someone painted a picture on it. On the left, you can see some green algae growing up on the top of the shell of that snapping turtle. And they're very fat turtles too, to be honest. I mean, if you look at the belly of the one on the right, they have like fat rolls almost. They kind of look like little plucked chickens, but that's okay. We still love the snapping turtle's shell to help protect them from the predators they may come across on land. Some other critters have shells too, like hermit crabs, right? When a hermit crab gets too big for its shell, it jumps out of it and it finds a new shell to put on. Can turtles do that? No, they don't. Their shell is literally attached to their body. They are almost full grown at only four inches long. And his shell, is it flat or round? It's kind of round, but he does have it on land like tortoises do with their round shells. This one just isn't a very good swimmer. Talk about two different types of turtles that we don't see as often as we would like to in Minnesota. These last two turtles that live in the state are the first one is the Blanding's turtle. Has anyone heard of these? No, okay, this is Minnesota's uh, unofficial state reptile. She is in her 30s, and she should be a lot bigger than this. Look at her shell. Do you see any differences between her shell and the ones in the picture? What do you see that's different? Yeah, what do you see? Yeah, she's got mountains, right? Little bumps on her shell. This is called pyramiding in tortoises, and it is not a good thing. This means that while she was growing, she was not given the right type of lighting. And this sadly happens more often than it should. Or it shouldn't happen at all, really. But it happens quite frequently with turtles and tortoises that people get them as pets and they don't properly take care of them. So she will be forever deformed like this, unfortunately. But that's just kind of another reason to do your research if you want the new exotic pet to make sure you're going to take care of it properly. Whew, the keynote went well. The timing seemed to work out just fine. And now I have 10 minutes to get to my classroom where my sessions will be. Hey, look, they reset the clock. It's conveniently right next to the classroom I have to be in. She's debating. She's like, do I want a third mouse today? Oh, she got it though. Perfect. Yeah. How is she going to eat this in just one bite though? Ooh, yeah, she'll swallow it whole. Can you stretch out your cheeks? If you could stretch her, if you were a snake, you could stretch your cheeks out to your shoulders and you could swallow a watermelon whole. That's how stretchy their skin is. Can you feel your jawbones right here? Our jawbones touch in the front to make a chin, right? A snake's jaw bones don't touch right here though. That way they can spread each side apart and wrap them around their prey. So it's another adaptation that snakes have to help them eat large food items like this. We'll get to watch her skin stretch around the mouse too. How is she breathing with her mouth full of food? No. Very good, yeah, she's breathing through her nose. Snakes have a nose just like we do. They don't smell with their nose, of course, since they smell with their tongue. They also have a tube that opens up near the back of their throat. It's called the glottis, and they can open it up and even stick it out underneath the mouse and use it like a snorkel to breathe while they eat. And this is a pretty small meal for her. She could eat a small rat, and she has in the past. I just needed her to eat three rodents in one day for all three sessions, so we're giving her smaller mice instead. So this is her third one for today. And this will last her about a week or two. 
we're done. We did the keynote. We did three hour long sessions about snakes afterwards. And now we have everybody packed up and we're gonna go home. It was a good crowd though. Yeah, some questions were better than others. A lot of questions that were like, raise your hand. Yeah, what's that? Oh, I saw a turtle once. <laughs> Every time. Did you guys look around at the campus at all? Yeah, we walked around and played Pokemon Go. Yeah, for like an hour. Yeah. It was, well, it was like 37 degrees, so yeah, we it had was to take. Super nice. Oh, it was beautiful, so we had to take advantage. Well, our two hour trip turned into a three hour trip thanks to the snow, but we are home. I'm so happy we're home. Now all we have to do is put away all of the animals. All the animals have been put back and they are now enjoying a very well-deserved rest for the rest of the evening. The programs went well. The whole day was just a blast. I had a lot of fun. We did a lot of teaching in a short amount of time, but the kids were great and the keynote went well. We got a lot of compliments afterwards, so the other people must have thought it went well too, but I'm not gonna lie, I am relieved that it is all over with because I was nervous about that keynote for quite a while and it just feels good to have it done with and have it have been a success. But anyway, I need a drink because I need to relax for the rest of tonight. But let me know if you like this type of video. I haven't really done a vlog like this before. If you like it or dislike it, let me know in the comments below. And if it's well received, maybe I'll do another similar type of video in the future when I take another trip for programs. Let me know and we'll see you later. <laughs>